Over the Halloween weekend, Vancouver police responded to over 800 calls for service during a 24-hour period. A new call was generated every one minute and 11 seconds between 7 p.m. on October 31st and 5 a.m. on November 1st. And in comparison, typically new, a new police call is generated every two minutes and 16 seconds. On Halloween night, officers responded to a large crowd gathered on the Granville Strip. It was very disappointing to see the number of people congregating along Granville Street on Halloween, despite the recommendations of our provincial health officer. The crowd size was exceptionally larger than what would be expected during a pandemic. Additional resources were brought in from around the city to assist in creating a safer environment for the public and officers. Based on the hostile demeanor and the size of Saturday's crowd, social distancing tickets were not issued to the party goers along the strip. It would have not been a safe or an efficient use of the available police resources at the time. It is important to note that police must consider officer and public safety when deciding on possible enforcement options. One incident that attracted a large crowd and eventually a swarming on our members was in response to a traffic stop that was conduct conducted along the Granville Strip. Officers noted the passengers in the vehicle were out of their seats and they were sitting on the sides of their windows as the vehicle was in motion. When officers conducted the vehicle stop, the passengers got out of their vehicle and swarmed the members. Our members had to request additional cover units as the group increased to around 30 people and they were becoming increasingly belligerent to police. As officers were responding to this swarming, one man jumped on the hood of the police vehicle in attempt to provoke the crowd. This man was arrested for breach of the peace and taken to jail. Another police vehicle had its rear passenger side window smashed. No one has been arrested for that incident. Some other incidents of note or other investigations were threat calls, uh, multiple traffic stops, break and enters, and disturbances. And from those particular calls, we did seize the following items that you see here on the table. We have multiple cans of bear spray, multiple batons, multiple knives, imitation guns, masks, and fireworks. So as the night went on, just after midnight, an unoccupied Porsche Panamera caught on fire in East Van near Turner and Lillooet Streets. VPD and fire attended and deemed that that, fire, that vehicle fire was likely an arson. No one was injured, thankfully, and no other property damage uh, was reported. This file is being investigated right now by our major crime section. Minutes later, reports came in regarding an altercation between two groups at Empire Field, which is at Cassiar and Hastings Streets. One male was stabbed and taken to hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. No suspects have been arrested and the file is under investigation. Later on that morning, around between 5.15 a.m. and 6.15 a.m., a number of serious incidences occurred in the downtown east side. We had three reports of stabbings, all within minutes of each other. So the first one happened at around 5.48 a.m. A woman in her 50 was, 50s was reported being struck on the head with an object near East Hastings and Columbia Street. She was taken to hospital for non-life-threatening injuries, and this incident is being investigated. Three minutes later, officers were called to East Hastings and Carroll Streets where a man in his 30s had stab wounds. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and this file as well is being investigated. And then while our officers were dealing with that incident, um, a man in his 20s approached our officers for again, someone who had stab wounds. He was taken to hospital for non-life-threatening injuries and that stabbing is under investigation as well. Are there any questions in related to uh, the nights or the events of Halloween? Uh, are there three stabbing in downtown east side related? That's something that our investigators are looking into right now. It's still uh, pretty early in the investigation. So it's something uh, we're doing. We're, we're hoping to speak to witnesses, anybody that was in the area. They're asked to call us as well um, so we can uh, determine if they're linked or not. No, so all these items here were seized uh, from several calls that happened Halloween night, and they were threats calls, traffic stops, uh, a break and enter, or disturbances. Um, so they are all items um, that the officers just seized. Uh, the files are closed in that case, but they're all uh, stuff that has been taken off the road. And it's important to note that these guns that you see here, uh, most of them don't look like imitation fire guns or toy guns. They do look real, especially from a distance. Uh, and the knives, another uh, very concerning um, 
item that was taken off the road. So on the night on the ground for this period, how many people did, did you guys uh, count it? I don't have an exact number for you, but it was an exceptionally large crowd, um, much larger than anyone would expect during a pandemic. As we would expect, people would um, comply with social distancing and, and use of masks. Um, having said that, we did have to reallocate our resources. So yes, we didn't expect um, the group size, but we were able to reallocate resources, pull in uh, other officers from around the city to assist with the, with the large group. How many people were arrested? I don't have exact numbers on, on arrests. And was the BPD only there to observe, or did you guys actually disperse the crowd? Yes. So what was the first part of your question, sorry? Like were we only there to observe? Observe, like the people, or did you So, so we did have officers that were strictly assigned to uh, the Granville Strip, but as I said, uh, the, the crowd size grew to a, an unexpected amount where we had to call in other officers. So when, um, you know, ensuring compliance with COVID safety measures is a, is a shared responsibility. So it's not only the police responsibility, but our partners at the city and the province have a responsibility in ensuring these measures as well. That night, our primary responsibility was the safety of the public and the safety of our officers. Um, public safety became a priority. We needed to be there to prevent fights, prevent uh, damage to property, and, and worse, prevent any riots that could have happened. Um, our officers did describe the crowd as very uh, alcohol-fueled and, and irrational. Um, so at that time, attempting to disperse this type of crowd, especially a crowd of you know, alcohol fueled wasn't appropriate and to uh, issue tickets wasn't appropriate. Like I said, we had to become about crowd safety um, and just preventing any further damage that occurred that night. So we'll just go to the, the phone lines if there's no other questions from the room. So for those on the phone, if you could press star one to be put in the queue. <clears throat> Hi there, go ahead with your question. Hi, go ahead with your question. Oh, hi there. It's Shannon Patterson at TTV News. Can you tell me if there were any calls to uh, house parties where there were too many people, um, uh, over the six um, limited people that were allowed to be at house parties? Did Vancouver police attend any of those on Halloween? I don't have information on what type of calls we went to. I do know we didn't issue any tickets for um, non-compliance with large crowds in, inside a house. Um, our, our main um, goal that night was the, like I said, the protect protection of people and property along the Granville Street. We had to reallocate our resources from across the city to ensure safety of the public that night. Do you think that the people who were, uh, were there still people that were inside the bars who spilled out when bars closed at 11 o'clock? And do you think that something needs to be done to make that a safer thing? Sorry, can you say the first, the, I didn't catch the first part. I can't say for sure. I mean, I, I you know, I don't want to speculate um, where the people came from, what they did prior to all of this. Uh, you know, I think the main issue is the non-compliance that was shown that night and how, um, how, you know, disheartening it is. It's frustrating to see time and time again, uh, we, we are watching the news, we are watching our provincial health officer tell us about all these COVID safety measures that we need to um, uh, comply to. And for us to see that, it's, it's, it's very disappointing as the police. And our main concern that night was the safety of, of property and public safety. That was paramount. Hi there, go ahead with your question. Hi there, it's Isabel with City News. Um, I, I've got a question for you in regards to what do we do moving forward? Um, New Year's Eve is not too far away. Uh, you'll remember that March 17th for St. Patrick's Day, 
the city, the mayor of the city had urged um, a, the, uh, an order to shut down, and that was through BCH, to have shut down of bars and restaurants. Is that something that police would like to see? Because you're saying that you guys essentially did all you could that night. You had the, the resources that you had, and you called in backup, but you couldn't actually enforce um, any ticketing or any social distancing because you had to take care of safety. So moving forward, what would you like to see? Would you like to see more from the province and the city in terms of shutting down Granville Street altogether? What could we have done better and what can we do moving forward uh, looking into New Year's Eve? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, from a policing perspective, we would like to see people comply with the uh, recommendations of our provincial health officer, and that is wearing the appropriate PPE when in public, uh, keeping your group small, um, not congregating on the streets. So from a policing point, we, are, we do echo anything that uh, our provincial health officer does have to say. Again, um, you know, ensuring compliance with the COVID measures, it, it's, like I said, it's a, it's a joint issue that we uh, share with our partners at the city and the province. So. Okay, and can I ask a quick follow-up? Sure. Yeah, uh, so that being said, um, you know, obviously the province has also given Vancouver Police the ability to issue fines and um, to to enforce that. Um, as you mentioned, maybe that wasn't a safe um, situation. So then what, what are the options? If the province is saying you guys do have the power to enforce um, he's saying that issue tickets, but if you guys don't feel safe doing that, then what do we do when New Year's Eve is just a few months away? So you're right. It wasn't, it wasn't appropriate. Um, issuing tickets wasn't appropriate that night. Our response has to be reasonable and proportionate to, to what we're faced with at the time. Um, and in the case of Halloween, issuing tickets and, and trying to disperse the crowd wasn't, uh, wasn't appropriate. Uh, moving forward, um, you know, there needs to be more education. People need to really understand uh, the effects of gathering in a large crowd like this. It's, it's a health issue. Um, and, you know, people need to make that conscious decision not to leave their homes and, and, and congregate in large groups uh, in public uh, for the health of all of us. And just finally, so would you guys like to see something like on St. Patrick's Day where there was an order to shut down Granville Street? Is that something you guys would like to see? I think, you know, um, you know, talk has to be done. I know that we are in, in uh, communication with our partners at the province and the city. So, you know, it's inappropriate for me right now to just uh, speculate on, on what would it be like in, in, a, in a perfect world. But I do know um, our management is in talks with our partners at the province and the city. And, and going forward, um, you know, there will be more information and, and more discussion on, on this particular issue.